Hello, and welcome to Tip of the Week. My name is Ken Colgan with TheBIMGuys.com. We do Revit, Navisworks, and AutoCAD training, support, modeling, and BIM coordination. You can check us out on the web at TheBIMGuys.com. In this video, I'm going to talk about dealing with roof and ceiling joist issues. Uh, this pops up pretty often. I had it happen to me uh, yesterday evening, and I had a client call me today. So we're going to take a look at that. I'm going to go to level one, and you'll see we got a little building. There ain't really much to it, but it's going to get the example done. Uh, if we go to 3D, you'll see there's our little building. It's a sweet thing. and You'll start to see kind of some line work showing through, but when I zoom in close, it disappears. That's just a little visual thing. It's not hurting anything now. I'm going to go back to level one and click on that section. Now, when you start to change roofs up a bit, things happen. Now, I've got this floor in here, and I'm putting it up here because I want it to represent, let's say, some uh, uh, roof, excuse me, uh, ceiling joists. And so now what I want to make sure is how do I deal with all this stuff? Let me go ahead and change this roof out a little bit. Well, it doesn't matter which one it is. Okay. Now, when you pick on a roof and you create a roof, you have two options. Uh, you'll notice currently it's running on a truss option. And you'll notice how the roof is sitting on the wall here. It's not actually cutting like a rafter. Now, if I change this from a truss to a rafter, you'll notice that the roof drops. And notice how it sits. It sits pretty much just like it would be framed up. So it drops. Now, you can see we have this problem. I've got these little nuggets of, let's say, ceiling joists sticking out. Now, if you've been in construction or you've gone out to a job site and you've seen some things that are going on, what they do in the field when this happens is actually they cut that ceiling joist back. They cut it on a 45 to actually make it work. Uh, so you don't have these little things popping out like so. So how do we do that in, in this world? What I'm going to do is go to 3D and for ease I'm going to take the roof and I'm just going to right click, hide in view, category. Now we could use the shortcut key to do that but now I can actually see my uh, floor element coming around here. Now we're going to trim it back. There's lots of commands to do this, but I find this is probably the easiest. It takes a couple of steps, but it's relatively quick. I'm going to go to architecture. I'm going to drop down a component here, and you'll see it says model in place. Now I'm going to hit model in place. I'm going to fire up and say I want to use a roof. So I'll come on down here, and I'm going to make it a roof. Hit OK, and we'll give it a name. OK. Now, what we're going to use is called a void form. Now, if you're comfortable with extrusions, you can use that. But I'm going to use a void sweep because I can do the whole roof quite effectively. So I hit void sweep, and it's a two-step process. Number one, we're going to pick a path. So I'm going to walk around the top edge of this floor or roof or ceiling assembly, whatever it may be, that I need to trim back. And then I hit finish. You'll notice how it notes that path. The second thing I need to do is I need to draw the void that I want. Now what I'm going to do is spin this thing around. I'm hit the right side. You'll see it spins around. And now I can visually see how it's going to work. If you're worried about getting it just right, mathematically, you can actually come in here and use a section or an elevation to do it. Because in sections and elevations, you may have a little bit more um, options to do what you need to do. So I'm going to say in this instance, let's say west. Now you'll see again, I can see the information showing up here. So I can actually see what I need to trim back that either of those work. Now this is 2020.1 and you'll see there's kind of a graphic uh, little bump here. You'll notice how the buttons have all disappeared. If you click on these tabs you'll see they come back. So the mint green tab there will get it back. So now what I want to do is hit edit profile. What it's going to do it's going to let me draw using line, circle, squares, whatever I want to trim that thing back. So I'm going to draw a line and I'm going to draw a purple line. I'm going to come back a certain distance, click, come net. I think I have my chain turned off. Let me turn it back on. The chain stops, and I'm going to come down here, click, and again, you can get it lined up if you know the slope of your roof already. I think mine's, um, well, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. I'll put this little triangle in there. Now, that is going to be the void that's going to trim out. Now, I'm going to go back to my 3D view. I'm jumping around a little bit, and you can kind of see how it's working, and we'll go back to home. So what we're doing now is we've set up a path going around, and now we've also set up a little notch that's going to cut it back. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit finish. So what we have defined, we defined a path, we designed a shape that's going to be the void. And at this point, again, the screen's getting a little screwy. So I click on that and I hit finish. So what it does, it creates a void. Now, once the void is, is cut, you kind of see it showing up there. When you hit finish, you may have this happen. I'm glad it showed up. Sometimes it comes and says, I can't cut anything. I don't know what to cut. Hit cancel. 
Okay, don't panic. What we have here is this item is in kind of the standard Revit world, and this item is inside of a family. So we're going to use this tool called cut. Cut from the main object. If I can get, get the main object, let me hit tab on that. Tab. From the main object, I'm going to cut this element here. And you see how it trims it all the way back. Now I hit finish, and the object has been trimmed. Now here's the cool part of this. If I was to take this wall and move it, I'm going to drag it a little bit. I want you to notice what happens. Being that we used a selected path as we adjust the house in the future, or whatever we're working on, notice how the floor, ceiling, joist assembly, whatever this is, will follow because the tools we used. I picked the walls. And also, the sweep will continue to follow. So quite nice there um, that you can get this. Even if, I think if you go edit boundary, as long as you don't destroy it and rebuild it, you'll see that it does not uh, it does not lose itself. So kind of a nifty little tool there. So go ahead and give that a try. That is called a sweep. I'll run through it again really quick. Uh, or just you could re go through the video again. But for the most part, what you're going to do is you find the point where you want to be. So here we are. Grab the roof. Hide it. Hide elements. Then grab this here. Okay, that's what we want to edit. So you're going to go architecture. You're going to go component, and you're going to go model in place. Now, here is the kicker. If you are a Revit LT person, you do not have this capability. Okay, you'll have to use some other tools up for another video. But uh, model in place is a tool that's in the full version, and it gives you the ability to do what you need to do. Hope you enjoyed the tip. If you have any questions, comments, check us out on the web at thebimguides.com.